Okay, time for a new video, and whether you are somebody new to my channel or you are returning to my channel to watch this video, it is greatly appreciated. As always, I'm filming this video in one go, therefore I apologise in advance if I stumble over my words going forwards, and indeed if the quality of this video is fairly poor as well. If there's any lag, anything like that at all, sadly it cannot be helped, and hopefully it isn't too much of an issue for you. This is yet another Eurovision 2021 related video here on my channel. As I'm recording this, it is the afternoon of Friday the 14th of May 2021. This time next week, we will have a running order for the grand final of the upcoming Eurovision Song Contest, which is of course taking place this year at the Ahoy in Rotterdam in the Netherlands. Every single semi-final act has now rehearsed on that stage twice. Today we have had the second half of the second semi-final, all of those artists rehearsing again. I've seen all of the rehearsal clips. Denmark's video was uploaded to the official Eurovision YouTube channel barely five minutes ago as I'm recording this. And as I have been doing for the past week or so, I'm going to give you my brief thoughts. As always, let me know what you think as well. And as always, there will be links in the description to my other social media pages too. So first to rehearse today was Georgia. This is You by Tornike Kipiani. And really, there's very little to say about this. In the first rehearsal, we didn't really see a whole lot. Uh, if I recall, we could barely see him, because I think the cameraman was pretty much stationed in front of Tornika for most of that clip that we saw. But anyway, today, really not looking too bad. But that means little, to be honest with you. I don't think this song is going to trouble the voters, public or jury members, that much at all. Uh, what we have is the LED screen has sort of rotated a little bit, Tornika walks out, and we have this beautiful blue lighting behind him. He's quite smartly dressed, not too dissimilar to what Uku was wearing for Estonia yesterday. This is fine. He's got a lovely voice. He's got quite a rich tone. Whether it suits this type of melancholic track, I really don't know. It's fine, but it's going to be a very static performance. There didn't seem to be anything about this. Admittedly, we're only seeing about 30 seconds worth of footage, but there's nothing about this that suggests it's going to be a surprise qualifier next Thursday night. Let me know what you think, though. After Georgia, it was Portugal, I believe. No, Albania. I do apologise. This was pretty damn good, and Shela Peristeri with Karma. She's wearing this rather fancy silver outfit and behind her we have pulses of red smoky patterns but also she's sort of interacting almost with uh, smoke patterns on the stage. We've got red and also this sort of turquoise shade. It's very powerful. I certainly didn't mind the camera angles. The vocals are really strong too. I'm thinking Albania will sneak in, perhaps in 10th place, admittedly, but sneak into the final, nevertheless, next Saturday. Uh, really can't fault it. She's alone on stage, but she's totally in control. She can absolutely carry this song and this performance by herself. And I really like the colours as well, obviously mirroring the Albanian flag with the black and red. It just gives this song more of a dramatic vibe, I guess. And it's really appreciated. Moving on, I do believe it is Portugal. Next. Now, this was just tremendous. Portugal is rising in the odds, and I can absolutely understand why. And it's remarkable, actually, because when the Black Mamba with Love is on my side won Festival de Canchao, I think most Eurovision fans were utterly dismayed by this outcome. The first Portuguese entry at the contest entirely in English. But you know what? This is a very credible track. Yes, it's a touch repetitive, but I think we can let that slide. This is so unlike anything else this year. It gives off this sort of jazz bar, uh, sitting with a drink and just chilling out to the music sort of feel. I can really appreciate it. Uh, what we have are warm tones. We've got sort of oranges on the backdrop. We've got the semi-transparent LED screen as well that comes down. The lead singer walking onto the runway. And what we see on that semi-transparent LED is a figure walking as well. We've got hearts, sort of concentric heart shapes on the backdrop. Really lovely. We've got that silhouette of the orchestra too. 
They're all very smartly dressed. Vocals, really great. He's got such a unique voice, and I think it really does stand out from the field this year. There's very, very little that needs to change. And really, this is looking very strong indeed. I mean, if you thought Portugal wasn't going to be a qualifier this year, it might be time to change your mind. I don't think this would be a convincing qualifier, and I'm not sure there would be a ton of points for this in the grand final. But the juries should appreciate this quite a bit, and I'm sure the public won't totally dismiss it either. I like it more and more every time I listen to it. The rehearsal today only boosted this group's chances of going through to next Saturday's grand final. Let me know what you think. I thought it was terrific. Uh, then we have Bulgaria. Well, this gave off winner vibes. It is one of the favourites to win, of course. This is Victoria. Growing up is getting old. She's atop this cliff-like structure. We've got sand falling from the ceiling. What we saw in the rehearsal clip today was her looking down at this image of her and her father. That's a very touching, personal moment that I hope the audience at home sort of understand next week when they see it. Maybe the commentators will say something about it. It's very beautiful. The vocals are really nice. I've said it before, I'll say it again. Victoria has this fr almost fragile but very pretty voice, and I think it suits this song very well. Certainly there is a great atmosphere to this performance, and when we see the whole thing, that's only going to be ramped up as well. Terrific. Do I think this is going to win... No, but I think it will certainly be up there in the results. Um, yeah, really, really nicely done. Uh, I know that she interacts with the sand at one point as well. It falls into the palm of her hand. Really nice job. Got to move on. Then we have Finland. Well, this was uh, everything we thought it was going to be. I said this last time when they rehearsed for the first time. This is just a step up from what we saw at the Finnish National Final UMK a few months ago. This is Blind Channel, of course, with Dark Side. We've got images of the band on the backdrop. We've got lots of flashing lights, reds and whites. Uh, they're wearing black outfits. Um, yeah, one of them's in a sort of black vest, black trousers. I've read online a few people think that this is just some sort of tribute act to something like Linkin Park, if you see what I mean. But no, this is a very credible entry. It's great that we've got a song like this in the competition. This is not like Italy's rock number. Um, this is more metal, whereas Italy is more straight up, you know, glam rock, that sort of uh, realm. But I, I think this is great. This is in my personal top ten. Uh, I like the camera work as well. I think at one point it sort of does a full 360, which is really nice. This is going to get people talking, it's going to stand out a lot, it's going to qualify. It's not even a really risky entry. Uh, it's just a song uh, in a genre that we don't get nearly enough of at the contest. Terrific stuff. Well done, Finland. Moving on, after Finland, uh, I'm looking at this list here. There's Maniskin from Italy playing ping pong, because why not? Latvia. This... Just disappointed me a tiny bit. This is Samantha Tina finally representing her country with The Moon Is Rising. She's in this rather fancy green outfit. Her backing singers are in green outfits too. And we've got this uh, very regal, um, uh, rich, golden, swirling pattern on the LED screen. The stage feels a bit empty to me. It's her and the three backing singers and that's it. I feel like there needs to be something else. This isn't a song where you can really have a dancer. So, I don't know. Nothing's going to change now. But the stage feels a bit empty to me. Vocal's really good. We know Samantha will belt the hell out of this next week. She's already doing so in this rehearsal clip. Um, but I was left quite underwhelmed, to be honest with you. If this makes the final... Well... I can't imagine this is going to finish too high up on the scoreboard next Saturday night. I don't know what the jurors will think of this. I can't imagine there'll be a ton of points for it. There'll be more public love, perhaps. Uh, but yeah, I'm very much on the fence with Latvia. I'm, I don't think it's going through. But then again, I haven't made my final predictions just yet. Let me know what you think. After Latvia, 
Switzerland. Well, this has got people talking. There's quite a few dislikes on the official Eurovision uh, YouTube channel clip for this, which I think is very harsh indeed. I think what is maybe baffling some people is the dance element. But, you know, we didn't want him sat behind a piano. They're doing something a bit different. They're doing something which makes this song stand out more. They're not just going down the generic route. They're shaking things up a bit. And I think it does work. Um, there was a comment I saw on the video, actually, where somebody said that if you muted it, you would think that this is more of a rap song, a rap performance, because of the way he's really getting into it and moving like this. And I can sort of understand why you would think that. Um, I don't think he needs to move quite as much. Whether he moves a lot for the entirety of the performance, I really don't know, because we've only seen a small snippet. Uh, he's wearing black trousers, this black top with swirling white patterns all over it. Uh, I mean, he sings so well, his voice is absolutely tremendous. And he's got these white pillars, uh, white structures around him that stagehands will move around as well. And I know at one point he's bathed in this purple spotlight. It's looking really good. We've got sort of quick camera cuts as well, which I personally think work quite well. Flashing lights, this sort of watery pattern on the backdrop. Um, I don't think it's quite there yet. But I have full confidence that next week, John's Tears with Toulouniver will certainly impress the jury members and the public alike. This is going through. There's no situation whatsoever in which Switzerland miss out. It's still a potential winner. However, perhaps John's chances are fading slightly, more so after today. In the press poll, which shouldn't really matter that much, but in the press poll, he was actually behind Portugal and Bulgaria. And that might be a slightly telling sign that the momentum is fading for this song, which is a great, great shame, because it's so very good. And then Denmark, Fyro Flamme, Uvros Pahinnanden, let's practice on each other. Uh, this is, again, like Finland, really, just a step up from what we had at the national final a few months ago, DMGP, lead singer, pink jacket, well, it's a very similar outfit, exactly the same outfit, pretty much. Uh, the other member of the group is on a podium off to one side, We've got this sort of disco theme on the LED screen, very Tron, if you've seen that film before, uh, very much like that. This sort of uh, throwback um, computer game style design, flickering lights, all of that stuff. Uh, in the rehearsal clip, the lead singer rushes out onto the runway, struts about for about five seconds and then runs back. Vocals aren't brilliant, but they're not terrible by any stretch of the imagination. This is fun. Puts a smile on your face. I really didn't think it was too bad. However, I'm not sure it's going through. Even though it's on last, I, I, I'm starting to lean towards Denmark actually not progressing to the final now. But if they do, great. It's a song in Danish in the grand final, which we haven't had since the late 90s. And I think that would be much appreciated, especially by Eurovision fans. And maybe because this is in a sort of throwback classic 80s sort of style, maybe the juries will actually appreciate that. Um, and the public, you know, they'll be charmed by it. And what have I said before? If you have a song that is on the right side of charming, by which I mean it's not too twee, not too cute, there'll be points. Charming equals points. And this song is quite charming. It's quite charismatically done. We wait and see what happens next Thursday. That's it. So, uh, for me, today, best rehearsal, honestly, Switzerland for me, followed by Bulgaria. Uh, weakest rehearsal, it wasn't bad, but I have put Georgia last here. Biggest disappointment, perhaps Latvia. Uh, and then, uh, in terms of all of semi-final two and the second rehearsals. Number one, Switzerland. Number two, Serbia. Number three, Bulgaria. And then the bottom three, bottom up, Georgia, Poland, Latvia. Biggest disappointment, Poland. Also the Czech Republic. That definitely needs a bit of improvement in the vocal department. And perhaps the staging as well a little bit. And then taking into consideration every single country this year. Obviously the automatic finalists have only rehearsed once. 
But for me, Italy, France, Switzerland, top three, followed by Cyprus and Serbia. Cyprus is just absolutely ready to go. And then uh, biggest disappointment, well, I've already mentioned them. Poland, Latvia, Sweden disappointed me. Romania still needs a bit of work as far as I'm concerned. That is not a safe qualifier. Czech Republic too. Um, and that's about it. So, roll on this year's contest. I think as I'm recording this, uh, France is the favourite to win by a very narrow margin. I think Italy's second and then Malta third. Yeah, Malta's rehearsal was pretty good, but I think Italy and France were stronger. Once we see the second rehearsals for the automatic finalists, uh, France, yeah, I don't know. There's a part of me that feels that Barbara could absolutely trounce the opposition in the jury half of the results next Saturday. You know, 350 points blowing everybody else away. And then there's a part of me that thinks that actually... Well, let's not forget, a decade ago France were favourites to win with Sonu, and look what happened there. Absolutely nowhere in the results mid-table in the end. So, we just don't know what's going to happen. I'm working on my... Uh, predictions. I haven't uh, altered my semi-final two prediction just yet, but I'm sure I'll mention that in a future video, maybe this weekend. And then, obviously, when there's more rehearsals, I'll make videos. And then next week, prediction videos, uh, reaction videos to the results all being well. I'll have to move my laptop ever so slightly. Hopefully, you'll be able to see me okay on the night. And uh, next Saturday, the grand final, where I plan to film my entire reaction to the results, jury points and public results as well. It's going to be a long, long day. Hopefully the quality of this video wasn't too bad. Let me know your thoughts. Thanks for all the support recently. It means a great deal. And until next time, take care of yourselves. Roll on this year's contest. Bye for now.